Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is part three of how to make a folio. I hope this video is a lot less eventful than my last video that I tried to do. Um, dogs are completely taken care of. Everybody is good for the moment, so we're gonna see how this goes. But I think I have figured out how to splice videos using my cell phone, so if there are any errors, I should be able to get rid of them so you guys have a better viewing experience. So, okay, last time we were working on this panel right here. And we made an envelope with gussets and a flap coming down. So I went ahead and sewed that. As you can see, I've got the, make sure you can see, I did the single stitch here and then the crisscross on this one. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a piece of jute um, I don't know about how much, so I'm, I think I don't need very much because this is going to come down pretty far. Yeah, yeah, that ought to do it. So I'm going to tape about that much to the back side of this. So I'm just going to flip it over. And this is gonna go here and then I'm gonna grab some of my you can glue it down if you want because you're eventually gonna cover it with something here but I just like that extra reinforcement of some packing tape so I'm gonna use a little bit of packing tape and just tape this down as close to the center as I can get it and then just tape that puppy down okay and it doesn't matter if there's wrinkles or anything like that. I mean, try to smooth it down, but you're gonna cover this, so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. So then you should have this string that is taped to the other side. Now we are going to glue down the bottom part. And you are going to put glue on this part, ah, this part right here on this side this end over here, and then the bottom little flippy flap down here. But before you do that, this needs to, no, it doesn't, Never mind. ignore me, ignore that. Okay, I was thinking something else. Okay, no, never mind. this needs to be down, so don't let this be under this, it needs to be down because it's gonna come over it. So I'm gonna take my Fabri-Tac, just give that a little press so it, stays down a little better and I'm just gonna glue a good sized line down that side down this side and down the bottom and then comes the fun part of trying to get it on here the easiest way I found to do it is to line it up on the outside as best as you can and then line up the bottom and kind of try to line it up as you go. And then once you feel like you've got it on one side, flip the other side in and squish it down. There we go. And, then, and don't, I mean, it, it, it's, not, it's not super easy, so don't feel bad if it takes you a few tries. But this, of course, is another reason that I use Fabri-Tac, because if I would have used Barely Arts, or not Barely Arts, I haven't even tried that glue yet. If I would have used um, Art Glitter Glue, that would have been stuck, and there would have been no maneuvering. So um, I'm just pressing it down, because with those gussets, it likes to flop out. And as soon as I feel like that is good and stuck, which I feel like I'm pretty stuck, I'm gonna take the top. And now I did go ahead and sew in that little pocket that we made. All I did was put a little glue um, on the edges, just a little bitty bit to hold it in place. And then when I sewed this, I just sewed this in with it. So um, it has a little pocket when you open the flap. So now I'm gonna take this piece and I wanna glue it down towards the top. So let me see here. I might have to trim the edges just a pinch. Yeah, to get it down in there, what you're gonna have to do 
is you're going to have to cut right here just at the slightest angle, just about like that. And that way it slides down in there just a little bit better because um, they're the exact same size, so it's just buttoned up against itself. So then, yeah, it slides in there very nicely. So, and you don't want it to slide all the way in because you want it towards the top, but you want it to have the, the, um, the room there to where it can go down in there if it needs to or not. Yeah, okay, so now I'm gonna put some glue right here. to glue this as even as I can with my gussets at the top with allowing this to scoot inside there if it needs to. Now you can cover this area if you want. If you don't like the way that that came out, that is totally up to you. That's fine. It doesn't really bother me because most of the time this stays closed. It's just an envelope. But um, if it bothers you, by all means, take and put something pretty in there or use some washi tape um, whatever you want to do to make it to make it yours and to make it what you think is beautiful so once I've got that glued down I'm gonna flip that down and then I have my jute and all I'm gonna do is just wrap it around that circle just like that and I did make this a little too long so I'm just gonna clip this right there all right so that is that panel. I need that a little too. Why are you not laying right? Oh, there we go. All right, so now we have two completed panels. I'm gonna flip this way, and we're gonna work on another one today. And I today, I actually have an idea of what I wanna do. Um, I'm going to choose a piece of paper for the background which I gotta look and see what I've been using so I know what to use next and I think I'm gonna use this one and we're gonna do this back mm, we're gonna do this panel right here so right now I'm just kind of squishing this a little bit to where I can see the gusset because like I said I want this to butt up right up next to it or just go right past it most of the time I go right past it on each side. So I'm gonna mark the width using the gussets as my lineup tool there. And then I'm gonna line it up with the top. And I'm going to mark here at the bottom. There we go. At least I have glue all over me, I swear. Okay, I'm gonna set this to the side and I'm gonna cut this. And I'm gonna cut it up and down first if I can find my mark. Ah, I hate it when I use dark paper because I can never find one. Oh, there it is, at the top. So I'm going to line it up with my little mark there. Make sure it's flush. That off. Did I? Is that right? I feel like I got off right at the end, but I guess I didn't. Okay, and then I'm gonna line up with this mark here and cut off the bottom. All right, so now I have to decide um, what I'm gonna do next, which what I wanna do with this one is I wanna do a flap that goes this way that's almost as tall as this so it actually works as almost like another page and we're going to cut out the center and make that an acetate windowed pocket and then um, on this side I'm going to have a diagonal flap and then we're going to do a um, either a side tuck or a large belly band on this I'm not sure which one yet it just depends on whichever looks better when we get to that point so first let's make the acetate windowed pocket so all you need for this of course is your 12 by 12 paper um, I use just a little craft knife and um, a sheet of acetate so we are going to use let's see here um, I like 
that for that. Um, I think, you know, you wouldn't think it's such a hard decision, but it's a hard decision. I think I'm going to go with another one of the orangey papers. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in the orientation that I need. I know it needs to go to have the gusset on this side, which is to fold it this way. Now I'm just going to give it a little squeeze and then I'm going to line it up with this and make sure that it's not too wide. And it is not. It fits in there just like I want it to. So I'm going to finish folding it right here. Make sure that's all even. And burnish that down. All right, now I need it about just a little shorter than this. So I'm going to mark it. I'm going to say I'm going to go down about a quarter inch. And I'm going to mark it there. So it's about an eighth an inch on each side. So then I'm going to take this to my cutting board. I'm going to cut that piece off and put it with my scraps because I will probably use it for something else. Now, here's the fun part. And I say that because it's not. Um, this is part of um, the moderate difficulty to making a folio is um, the measuring and the cutting and whether or not you're a perfectionist. I am OCD, but I am not a perfectionist. So what I typically do, I don't measure out how far I am from each side or the top or the bottom. I just kind of eyeball it. I have to use a ruler like this so I know that I'm straight. But um, I'm going to say a half an inch from each side and probably... Um, And probably a half an inch from the top. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I think that's a half inch. Turn this around. Oh, it's a little more than a half inch. It's about three quarters of an inch. I'm sorry, I, correction. So, I'm gonna take my sweater off. I'm actually warm in my house, it's crazy. I am the most cold-blooded creature on the planet and I think I'm sweating, as weird as that is. Okay, so. Yeah, about three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna line this up with that center black line. I'm lining the edge of the paper up with it. Which, if you don't have a ruler like this, you can just make little marks at three quarters of an inch all the way down and then just do a straight line. Um, you can do it however you want. I just choose to do it this way. So I'm gonna mark that line. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to line this up, that center black line with the edge of my paper. And it also helps if your page has like lines or orientation on it because you can um, use that to make sure that you're straight. And I'm going to come up here. And, well, I need to do it this way because I'm right-handed and that just feels weird. So I'm going to line up that black line with the edge of my paper. And then I'm going to draw across. And then I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to line up that black line with the edge of the paper. And I'm gonna draw straight across. Okay, so in the end, you should have a rectangle. Now, I do want you to know, you can do a die cut. If you'd prefer to do a die cut, you could do a smaller window if you don't have a lot of acetate. Um, you can do any shape that you want to. I just know that for me, squares and rectangles are easier unless I get my die cutting machine out and Sometimes that's worth it, and sometimes it's not. <laughs> and not everybody has a die cut machine, so um, I want you to see how I do it. And this is typically how I do it, is without one. So then I'm just gonna take my little craft knife, and I'm gonna press pretty hard, because I want it to go through both sheets, because if you don't do them together, then you risk um, overlapping and uneven lines and being able to see the other side through the acetate. I've learned that the hard way several times. 
So just press pretty firmly and cut down your pencil line. And I always get a little wiggly with it, so don't worry, but I am gonna check. Okay, so I am pushing hard enough. And then go down the outside. I'm mad because I had a better blade for this, but it's stinking broke. So now I've gotta go get another craft knife so I can get the blade that I want. I mean, but my gosh, I think I bought this at the dollar store. And it has just been the most amazing tool without a huge cost. And then this last one right here, pressing firmly. All right, and then I can use these for something later. So I'll put those with my scraps. Now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna erase. Sometimes the lines overlap, sometimes you got a little wiggly. Um, but I don't want all those pencil lines on here. So I am gonna erase around the edge and make sure that I got all that off of there. Oop. All right. All right, next, I'm gonna ink the, um, the inside up. So I'm gonna take my vintage photo and just gently hit the inside edges. Just because, I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to do anything uh, the way that I say to do it. I mean, you can do whatever your heart's desire, but um, this, I think, just helps with a lot of that white edging and stuff that you can see when you cut the paper, and it just gives it a more um, vintage-y look, which I prefer. And then flip it over and do the other side. There we go. It can be so time consuming, but it's so worth it in the end. It just changes the entire look of the project when you give it a good inking. But you don't have to ink at all if you don't want to. You don't have to ink a single bit of this. This is just my, what I wanna do, so. All right, now I need to grab a sheet of acetate, which what I use, I mean, you can use projector film, you can use, um, I mean, whatever, clear packaging, whatever you want. I use 12 by 12 acetate sheets that I buy on Amazon. And all we're gonna do is I'm gonna measure this out with my square. And I'm gonna grab, a. I have a little fine tip black marker here that I think I got at Dollar General. And uh, I'm gonna mark on my acetate where I wanna cut it. And I wanna leave about a quarter of an inch on each side. Now I have 1 8 inch scoring tape, which is what I'm gonna use. You can glue this down. I just have to warn you, especially with like Fabri-Tac, it's stringy and sometimes you'll get glue on the acetate and then you've got to get that off, which is why we all have adhesive remover erasers. Um, but that, that of course is up to you. So I'm gonna mark this down here at the bottom. And then since I know I need two and they're the same size, I'm gonna pull this across and I'm gonna line it up to where the edge would be with the mark. And then I'm gonna mark this side too. So now that I have both my pieces ready to cut. So just real quick, just to show you that again, we marked about a quarter of an inch on the top and bottom and on the sides. And then I just moved it over to where it's gonna be cut off and made another mark for my next one. So we're gonna cut off the bottom first, or you're not gonna know where to cut on, on the other side. So we're gonna cut off the bottom, and line it up with my little marker mark. And I save all my pieces of acetate because you just don't know what you're gonna need it for. And then I'm gonna cut off the edge, the end that we're not using. Put that down in my little scrap bin. And then I'm gonna cut this pretty much right in the center where that little mark is. And then I have my two sheets of acetate. So now I'm gonna tape these in. 
So I'm going to open this up. And we will get around to ink in the edges. I usually just do that after I put the acetate in. I don't, I don't know why. The things I do. So now with the score tape, if you're if you're blessed enough to have this, um, I just keep it as close as I can to the edge, all the way down, and then just use my nail to rip it off. There we go. And it's kind of hard to see from that angle, but. We do what we can. Man, it has been a morning already. I woke up with a headache that I had yesterday. I could not shake. But I think my ibuprofen finally kicked in because I was feeling a little bit better and decided to go ahead and record this episode because I work all weekend and I wanted to be able to post it so that you guys were able to have consistent video every couple of days on um, on how to do this. Because I know like when I start a project, I want to work on it. I don't want to just sit and wait and stare at it and wonder, you know. I want to I wanna get it done. So um, I thought I would go ahead and get this part done. Had a few ideas, I'm getting some more ideas, and I'm jotting them down so that I can remember them. Now I'm going to take my, uh, a little pokey tool, whatever you have for removing adhesive backing. And I'm just going to do one side at a time or one flap at a time. So I'm going to take all of it off of this side. Let it go. Let it go. And And then I'm going to lay my first sheet of acetate down. So I'm going to take one and I'm going to kind of brush it off. It always gets little debris on it. I don't know how, but it just, it's like a magnet for it. And I'm going to line it up at the top as best I can with the quarter inches in mind. And then I'm going to lay it flat. And I will tell you, usually... I'd say 90% of the time I'm at an angle and that's okay. As long as your tape is covered and your square is covered in acetate. If your tape still shows a little bit, you want to put something over that because if not, whatever you put in this pocket is going to stick to that. So and you can just use a little piece of paper or uh, take some packing tape and cover it, scotch tape, whatever you want to do. So now we're going to do the other side. And I'm going to that off and this one this one and then the bottom and then we're going to take this one and get most of the debris off of it and then I'm going to line it up with the top keeping those quarter inches on each side in mind yeah see that one I got more at an angle but my tape is covered so it's all good. So that is how that works. You can see I've got the quarter of an inch. Okay. Is that? Oh, that's got a glare. I'm sorry, guys. And um, then we're going to close it. And I'm going to go ahead and ink the edges. Just all the way around. My husband is helping his parents today. They have decided to sell their house and they already have a buyer. And he has gone over there because today is inspection day for the sale. And he's got to determine what he can fix and what he can't fix so that they can get a head start on this thing and get the sale to go through. I'm excited for him. I would love to move, but I can't even fathom the cost of houses and rent right now. It, I, I just, I have no words. I moved into this house five years ago and I got a great deal on my rent. And I just, even though my house is a little small and we probably need more space just because of our three dogs, I am not moving until the housing market changes because I am not paying 
I'm just not paying that much for rent or a house payment. That is just, I mean, you'll never pay it off. It's just insane to me. Um, okay, done rambling. So now I'm going to put this back on my scoreboard so I can put my score marks here. And I'm going to line up the edge with one of the little crevices. And I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, and six. So six of them. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to give that gusset a little bit of ink so it's not that stark white. And then I'm going to bend the ends and squish it down a little bit. All right, so this is ready to go for sewing. So I'm going to set it to the side and now we're going to make the flap that goes um, the other direction that's cut at an angle. And I think I'm going to use, I saw it when I was flipping through here and I thought it would be really pretty. Yep, there it is. And this beautiful piece of paper with these birds. So I want it to be probably about six inches tall. So I'm going to cut this down to six inches. And then I want the orientation of the gusset to be on the other side. So I'm gonna give that just a little fold and then I'm gonna match it up to make sure that it's not too wide and it's not. I'm gonna even it up. And then, there we go. So we've got this with the gusset on this side, which is what we want. I'm gonna go ahead and do my gussets, which I'm gonna do six, three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up. And then the next thing I'm gonna do, I want this to be kind of, like at an angle. So I'm just gonna eyeball this. I don't know how people measure when they do this, but I know I don't want it to be a complete angle. I just want like a big part of the corner chomped off. So I'm gonna start about here and I'm gonna cut all the way through. There we go. And then now I have this pocket that has an angle in it. Now, I think I want, let me go ahead and ink this while I'm thinking. I'm thinking I want a side tuck on one side and a pocket on the other. I'm thinking that is what I'm gonna want. So, yeah. So we will look at our scraps and go ahead and make those so that when we put it all together, I'll probably go ahead and glue those on today because I like to sew them with it. I think it looks cool. So let's see what we got over here. I've got, I don't want to use what I've got on this panel, so I'm skipping those. But I've got, that scrap would be pretty and this scrap would be pretty. So I think we're gonna do this one as a side tuck. So I just need to give this a little mark here at the bottom to make it even, and I'm gonna cut that off. And then I'm gonna hold it on here, and make sure it's as even as possible. And then I'm gonna turn it over gently, and I'm gonna clip this corner right off so it's flush with my cut. Yeah, just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and glue it down and I'm just gonna glue the top and this side and the bottom. And you don't need very much glue because you're gonna sew this. So just enough to kind of hold it in place. I mean, technically you could just glue the top and the bottom if you wanted because you're gonna sew those edges. There we go. And then just try to get it on there as flush as possible. All right, so there is that, which I forgot to ink it, so I'm gonna come in here and try to ink it <laughs> before I sew it anyway. All right, I think, yeah, that ought to do it, okay. 
So there's that side with a little side tuck. And you can put a notch in there if you want. Sometimes I like the notches, sometimes, uh. And then this one's going to be just a pocket. So I'm going to line it up. And it's right on the edge there, so I'm going to mark right there. And I'm happy with how deep it is. It, um, I like a deeper pocket. I may put something over that later when we go back and do a lot of our decorating. Sometimes I add smaller pockets and belly bands and things like that. And I'm going to go ahead and shave off a little bit of the top of this just because there's pencil marks all over it and I'm being lazy. All right, so this time I'm going to be, be smart and remember to ink it before I stick it. And... All right, so now we're going to go ahead and all I'm gonna do is glue the sides because I'm gonna sew this down so I don't want a whole bunch of glue at the bottom because I don't want it to restrict how much I can fit in here. And sometimes that glue spreads when you smush it. So I'm just gluing this side and this side. And we're gonna put it right here. All right. All right, guys. So, um, oh, we have the belly band we've got to make. So I'm going to set that to the side and now I've got to decide if I'm doing the big wide belly band or if I'm going to do just a side tuck, which the way this is going to end up looking, let me put it together and maybe I can kind of get an idea from that. It's going to be like this. You know, it really doesn't matter which one we do. It doesn't matter if we do a belly band or a side tuck. But I know I want to use something, um, probably one of the colorful floral ones. Yeah, so, okay, so let's do, let me grab a sheet here. Um, no, I think the white background will he won't be a nap with that other white background. Let's, that's really busy. Um, I think maybe this one. Now let's cut this down about there. And then I think I'm going to do a big belly band with it. Yeah, we're going to do a big belly band. And I'll go ahead and glue it down now because I'll sew it with it. So we're just going to line it up and then make a mark at the bottom. And go ahead and cut that off. And then I'm going to ink this up. excited about my 40 hour weekend but it's all right because that's all I have to do is just two days 40 hours and then I get Monday through Friday off well mostly get Monday through Friday off because on um, Tuesdays and Thursdays I help my husband out at his karate school and I like to pick up shifts throughout the week just for that little extra and uh, so I, I think I have Friday off, to be honest. Um, all right, so there is that belly button, which we're going to decorate and embellish and maybe put another belly band over the top of it. I haven't decided. Maybe we'll put some envelopes on it. Um, we'll play with it when we get to that stage of the folio. Like I said, this is just the base. So this is what this is going to look like. I'm going to get it sewed and then we'll put it together on the next installment on part four. But this is what this looks like. So this will be the next panel. And it will open this way. And it will open this way. And then you'll have your belly band in the center. So that is it for today, folks. I hope everybody is having a great day. I hope we learned something. Um, if you have any suggestions, questions, comments, anything, just uh, let me know in, in the comments below or shoot me an email.
I appreciate every single one of you for stopping by and watching, and uh, I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Bye!